Hello there. Boxing is back, and look what's coming in the weeks ahead. Boxing's golden boy, Oscar de la Hoya, has swept all before him. A world superstar. But now he faces his biggest challenge, the unbeaten welterweight puncher, Felix Trinidad. Also in Las Vegas, Johnny Nelson defends his WBO World Cruiserweight title. World title action coming soon on Sky Digital. Other world champions past and present return. Steve Robinson defending his European featherweight crown. And Richie Woodall is back to defend his WBC World Super Middleweight title. And at domestic level, so many top names like Burke and McGee. Plus, the British middleweight champion, Howard Eastman, all feature on Sky Sports in the weeks ahead. And in October, a world championship doubleheader. Eric Morales, the brilliant super bantamweight star, gives Belfast Wayne McCulloch the chance to become a world champion again. And perhaps the pick, as Nassim Hamid tries to unify the world featherweight title and defend his perfect record against Cesar Soto, a star-filled show on Sky Box Office. So many big nights, the best in boxing coming up on Sky. Jim Watt will be part of our team throughout the weeks and months to come. And we start tonight with a very traditional prize. It's the Lonsdale belt. And with it, the vacant British super featherweight crown on the line tonight. Michael Gomez against Gary Thornhill. Gomez from Manchester, age 22, a skillful young boxer. And he's on the way up. Thornhill from Liverpool, a veteran at 31 now, but a proven crowd pleaser who's shown before that he can do it against the odds. Well, both have tasted title success already, but this is the big one for both, and for the winner, some excellent matches just waiting to be made. They sell tickets too. Gomez in particular, very well supported. You might remember this lot. Let's be honest, they generally stand out a little from the crowd. Noisy in their dress and their support of their man Gomez and they've cheered him from one success to another recently. The long trip from Manchester south, noisy, in full expectation of success. Gomez going to win because he's a champion and he'll win, he always wins. Well, he's just been training hard for this, you know what I mean? He really deserves it. Uh, I just hope he does it, you know what I mean? Just hope he does it. He's going to win because he wants it more. That's all there is to it. He wants it, so I'll get it. Gomez going to win because he's the greatest it's from Manchester, we've got the best football teams, we've got the best boxers, we follow him all over, we went to Atlantis City, we've come down here, we've got confidence in him, all the guys are having big thousand pound bets on him, he's our favourite. And we're going over the title, and that's it. Big talk, traditional prize and a traditional British fight venue as we return tonight. It's Thornhill against Gomez for the British Super Featherweight crown from the York Hall, Bethnal Green. A title vacated by Charlie Shepherd. Also in the mix in this weight division, the likes of Dean Pithy and Barry Jones, the Welshman. So, Jim, there's a, a bit of a pedigree here for crowd pleasers. Do these two men fit the bill? Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. I mean, this is a real 50-50 match tonight. Uh, two guys with totally different styles, which I'm sure will make a, a good contest. Although there's a fair age difference between them, they're both fighters on the way up. The British title on the line tonight, and they both have big ambitions to go further. I'm expecting a long, hard fight tonight. Slow burning career so far for Thornhill, Jim, but this is the big test and a chance he will not get again in his career. Exactly, yes. At 31, this will be probably his, his one and only chance. But his victory over Dean Pithy, I think, must give him a lots of confidence. He must fancy Pithy's a better fighter than Gomez. He shared the ring with Justin Duku, who stopped him, but I don't think that will harm him any because he's another top-class fighter. Thornhill didn't turn pro until he was 25. His best win, as Jim has said, against Pithy, a result that commands respect. And he has campaigned largely at featherweight through his career. He weighed nine stone, one and three quarter pounds for this one. So comfortably under the 9-4 limit. Now for Michael Gomez. Also, Jim, a slow starter in his career in that he lost three of his first seven fights, but a big improvement since. Is he your favourite, or do you really see it as a 50-50? I see it as a 50-50 match with Gomez, a slight favourite because of his work rate, his speed, uh, and he's, he's a little bit more adaptable probably than Thornhill. But where I would worry about uh, Gomez is the later rounds. Thornhill very, very strong, good body punches, going to keep grinding it out. Thornhill expects it to be hard. 
He's, he's prepared for it to be hard. The Gomez hasn't been in too many real tough fights. Thought he might be better prepared for a 12-rounder, but I still slightly favour the boxing skills of Gomez. Here's how the two men themselves see the battle in their own words. Gomez first. After that losing run, it's now 10 in a row, wins, and he's very confident. You don't know what to expect with me. I don't know what to expect myself. Whatever I need to do, if I need to turn southpaw and box in southpaw, I'll do that. You know, if I need to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I'll do that. You don't know what to expect out boxing, movement, angles, I'll do that. You don't know what to expect. That's what's so exciting about watching me. I can take a good shot, I can give a good shot. You know, I've got great defence, I've got good defence, I've got good footwork. You know, they're the good, good assets. I'll be going into work on Saturday night. Well, Thornhill, yes, an up-and-down career for him, but the consistency comes in his determination to give the crowd a shot. Oh, that's in really, you know, from the first round. I've got to there, knock this kid right out of the stride to stay away and show me the bosses, you know, and I'm down here to do that. I'm in very good shape physically and mentally. Punching power, um, and fitness, and pressure fighting, everything really. I'm just a, a very strong fighter, you know, as uh, he's going to find out. Great matches for the winner in the pipeline at British and even world level. One of the men who could feature in a world fight, hopefully in the none-too-distant future. Former world champion, WBO version, Barry Jones. He's with Adam Smith at ringside. Well, Barry, this looks like a fascinating all-action type of affair. Tactics are going to be crucial, aren't they? Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be an exciting fight. Then you've got two, like, you know, coming forward, forward fighters. So I think it's going to make for a great night tonight. Michael Gomez, is he too young for this chance? 23. I don't think he's too young at all, you know, look, you can see yourself, he's a very, very confident person, so you know, he's just had a good fight back in the States recently, so you know, he's up for this fight, he feels that it's his time, so he's sure, you know, that he's going to win this fight and be British champion. What about Gary Thornhill? He's got the experience, has he got the uh, firepower? Well, I don't think Gary's a big puncher, though he is a hurtful puncher, but, you know, yeah, you know, he's, he's 30, you know, no, Gary, you know, he's been around the block a bit. But he's very, very strong and he's very, very composed. And Michael's really got his work cut out if he, if he, you know, if he's going to stop him like he does. Do you think it'll be a distance fight? I think it'll be a distance fight. It'll definitely be a late fight. But I'll go for, you know, maybe Thornhill on points. Gary Thornhill on points? I think so, yes. Thanks a lot, Barry. Batteries recharged out at ringside, all set to go in the new season. And there's plenty of work for them coming up. It's Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. And we'll hear from them after our Master of Ceremonies. Mike Goodall. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight Frank Warren proudly presents Championship Boxing. And we welcome viewers live and exclusive on Sky Sports here to at London's East End home of boxing, York Hall in Bethnal Green. Our officials are appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. And we begin with tonight's main event for the Super Featherweight Championship of Great Britain. Would you please welcome first to the ring from Liverpool, Gary the Tornado Thornhill. So here's Gary Thornhill, the 31-year-old from the old Swan area of Liverpool. An all-action pressure fighter, Thornhill, and probably with a more solid, experienced pedigree than his young opponent tonight. But as the boys have been saying all along, this really does look a genuine 50-50 match, and uh, I'd have to say, Glenn, just summing this up, I'd be disappointed if this was anything other than a pretty good fight. Yes, you would, you would expect it to be that. I think just the, the ingredients that each fighter's got, uh, the pros and the, the cons, really make for it to, to blend together well and be a, a really good fight. And Thornhill, a lot of experience, you know, he's been a, a slower career, it just took a while, but he's been in with a better man. You'd, you'd think he's got the edge on his feet, but whether Gomez has got the fire to pull it off, it's all to be seen. There's the huge Gomez fan club. Three coach loads of them have come down the motorway to support him, plus a convoy of cars. He'll feel like he's away from home, Gary Thornhill here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from Manchester, Michael uh, the Predator.
Michael Gomez. It's not his real name. He's called Michael Armstrong, actually, but he's changed his name and is named after the great three-time world champion from Puerto Rico, Wilfredo Gomez. Hence all those Latin sombreros from all his fans. Been very busy. Five fights last year. This already his sixth of 1999. Nice boxer, and only four weeks ago, he was in action in Atlantic City with a victory there over a decent American opponent. Brian Hughes is the trainer, the man who's produced world champion Robin Reed. Here's the tale of the tape tonight. Gomez, much the younger man, at 22, Thornhill, who's 31. Thornhill with height and reach advantages. Thornhill pretty light, really, at nine stone, one and three quarters. That is well inside. Is it too light? Gomez just nicely inside the limit. They both made their debut in 1995. Thornhill turning pro late at the age of 25. Similar number of fights, as you can see. Thornhill's had a few more rounds and has slightly the better knockout percentage neither of them have done a full 12 rounds before but Thornhill has gone nine in the past and eight rounds a couple of times Gomez's stamina is untested So this title vacated by Carlisle's Charles Shepherd, who's gone on to bigger things. The British Super Featherweight Championship at nine stone, four pounds. And these two men, it's the biggest night of their career to date. Gary Thornhill from Liverpool, Michael Gomez from Manchester. Big rivalry between those two cities, of course. And a great atmosphere here at the York Hall. Thornhill with the white trimmings on his black trunks. Gomez with his name written emblazoned, in fact, in gold on his waistband for you if you need the identification between these two super atmosphere as always at the east end cradle of boxing well, both fighters coming into this look very very hyped up this obviously means a great deal to either one of these boys gomez 
the question's been asked is this too soon for him at this level Thornhill has started fast and in the past he's had the reputation as a slow starter he said he'd look to impose himself early and that's exactly what he's trying to do well I think it is quite important for Thornhill to get a good start especially with Gomez being inexperienced he's got to try and put Gomez on the back foot not let him get any confidence and really take the play away from him right from the start Gomez looks as if he's just been taken a little by surprise by the speed of Thornhill's start not enough head movement from him he's getting caught by too many of those jabs good body shots as well from Thornhill who looks really fired up and sharp early on here nice little defensive work there from Thornhill good use of the jab he's putting his shots together very well for this early in the fight Gomez who came into this with some quite fluid plans I think he thought he'd have a look at what Thornhill was up to and then work out his game plan from there will that work for him he's getting hit with good shots to head and body early on here and Gomez finding it hard to be his usual busy self well Gomez needs to start adopting some lateral movement that's always been a, a good point in his in his armory he needs to step side to side and give plenty of angles and at this moment he's not doing that good right hand from Gomez his best shot so far He's won his last 10, Gomez, having lost three of the first seven in his career when he had a lot of problems out of the ring. Oh, wow, there was a clash of heads, almost a butt there, as they separated at the end of the round. They tried to eyeball each other, and Larry O'Connell's reading the riot act. Welcome back. Here's what happened at the end of the first round. So well, they're both very jaded up for this. Only Timbers just showing themselves a little bit there. Little head-to-head -head confrontation. Cornhill with the white trimmings on his trunks, starting much the faster in this British Super Featherweight Championship fight. A lot of the best fights we've shown on this channel in recent years have been for British titles. Great start by Thornhill, I thought. Yes, very good. Very sharp. A lot better from than his recent display, but there's a lot more on the line. This is a, a very important fight for Thornhill. Thornhill has only lost once, and that was when he came in as a fairly late substitute in a Commonwealth title fight and was beaten by the fringe world title contender Juco but he's caught by a left hook there from Gomez exploded that punch he's in trouble Thornhill here he got up a bit too quickly the corner said stay down for the full eight and suddenly from nowhere Michael Gomez had produced a great shot and he looks here to go in and take advantage can Thornhill get through the crisis he desperately needs to hold on and there's a long time left in the round Ben well, he's doing the right thing. He's hanging onto that rope. Thornhill desperately trying to clear his head. Can Gomez finish it off here? It's all there for him. It's up for grabs now for Michael Gomez. Thornhill just trying to hold on using his experience. Oh, and he's caught by another left. That bent his knees. He's in trouble again here. And this time he's wrestled to the floor, I thought, anyway. But the count is going to be administered. The count will be administered. They're counting this as a second knockdown. He is stopped. It is over in round two. Thornhill for a test. But Michael Gomez, to the delight of those sombrero-clad fans, is the British super featherweight champion in only the second round. Well, he really pulled it out with a big surprise. Left two. A terrific punch from Gomez and really Thornhill just desperately tried to get back in the fight to, to find his legs to steady himself but he just couldn't do it it was good 
pressure from Gomez. He picked the shots well. Calm Patience, down, please. Punch Calm picking. And you. it was a very good, very good victory for him. Well, the security men just making sure that the celebrations don't get out of hand on the far side there. There's some Breros being thrown in the ring. But what a win that is for Michael Gomez. It was a great left hook that started all the trouble for Gary Thornhill. It came right out of the blue. And from that point on, really, you suspected that Thornhill wouldn't get through the round. Well, he'd started so well, Thornhill, then. Gomez hadn't shown a lot. He just waited a little swing of the hips. Got tremendous leverage into that left hook. Really was a, a nice shot. Just as the left, the right hand came down, found the gap, and Thornhill went down heavily and never really recovered from that punch. It wasn't the ending most people were expecting. We thought this would be a long fight tonight, but there's no legislating for wonderful punches like that. That was an absolute peach. And now more action. Gomez trying to turn the pressure on here, and he dipped the knees, didn't he, of Thornhill again? Yes, he did, and really he's... He's not quite there, Thornhill. He's just trying to survive. And then over, over he goes. And the, the final one was a little bit of a, a pushover, but he was desperately hurt at that stage. That was counted as a knockdown. He seemed to be pushed at the last. But then Larry O'Connell, who's closer than any of us, looked into the eyes and said, no more. Fair stoppage. Well, I, I think it was. I mean, he was under a lot of pressure. I know the final little, the final little thing that put him down looked a little bit of a, of a push, but he was getting hurt with good punches, and he didn't quite look in there. It's a remarkable success story for Michael Gomez, the fighter who was born in a car in Ireland and brought up in a children's home in Manchester. He's now the British super featherweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after 1 minute 42 seconds of round 2, the referee Larry O'Connell stops the contest. Gary Thornell in no position to defend himself. The winner and new super featherweight champion of Great Britain, Michael Gomez! Live, and when it's live, you just never know what is going to happen. But I can tell you that Ladies Gomez, to win by knockout, was quite a big prize tonight. That's what boxing is in a nutshell. If you're new to it for this season, there is no sport like it for the unpredictable, explosive moment. When the bell rings, anything can happen. Anything. Now, just to remind you, live to follow this Gomez triumph, we'll have Nicky Serbin, the light middleweight who's been knocking on the door for the British title for a year or two. He's in action here live tonight, and that one comes up shortly against Koba Kulu tonight. But this has to be Michael Gomez night. What a start to his season and to ours. The new British super featherweight champion is with Ian Dark. Michael, what an amazing success story for you there. You seem to produce that uh, finish out of nowhere. I started, cold, I started off cold, you know, I knew the later rounds is where I would have took him. I was planning on taking him on later, I was making him miss, getting caught with a few daft light shots, a few daft jabs. I was going to burn him out, make him miss, eighth, ninth round, I would have took him. I'm not Dean Pippen, I'm not Stephen Conway. I'm not, you know what I mean? First of all, I'd like to thank my support very much. And I want to dedicate this belt to a young lad who died in my company in Manchester two years ago. Sam Powell, this is for you, Sam. I love you and I'm sorry for what happened. So you're dedicating the fight to him. This is, this is of a big moment in your career. But were you expecting that kind of finish yourself? You look like you surprised yourself. Oh, yeah, I did surprise. I didn't think it'd go that early. Great support. I didn't think it'd go that early, but I knew I'd catch up with him. I'm not being big I'm not saying I'll do this and I'll do that. I'm going to slow down, take my time. You know, I've just won the British title. I've got loads of time. I'm 22. I've got loads of time. This is quite a turnaround from early in your career when you lost three of your first seven. Yeah, like, see? I said, when I early on, Brian said, calm down, calm down, it'll come, it'll come. Frank stuck by me, I've got to give him that. He didn't get rid of me when he should, you know, he could have done. But I stuck, you know, he stuck by me, they all knew he had it. I had a lot of problems, my old man, who's watching at home, listening at home. 
for you, Dad. I love you. Yeah, he's very ill, your father, isn't he? My dad's very ill. He's, he's blind as well. You know, that first time I got told he was really ill when I started off. That all that court case. I'm not making excuses. I've got beat. Three fighters have beat me. Beat me on the night. I'm not making excuses. But I wasn't 100% like I am now, physically and mentally. I think a lot of people don't know your story. Your trainer tells me that you were born in a car and brought up in a children's home. It's, it's what a success. Story. That was real life. It's not a story. I'd like to thank Robin Reed, Andy Farnell, Mark Bennett, all the lads in the gym. It was a team effort. Brian Hughes, the whole team, Steve Woods, Pat Roddy, everybody. Well, that wasn't a story, but where does the Michael Gomez story go from here? I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. Right now, I fight Mike Tyson's on its lose. I'm that fired up. So I've got to calm down. There's no, I can't start asking, answering questions about fights now. I've got to go home, have a think. A week's rest and then come back, have a talk with Brian and Frank and then see what happens. Well done tonight. Let's bring in Frank Warren quickly. Frank, um, what does the future hold for him after a finish like that? Well, I mean, it's a fantastic finish. And what I like about it is that he's relaxing now. We took him out to the States. He fought on a show out in the States uh, last, in August. And he boxed beautifully. He's using his jab. It's the best I've seen him box. He looked composed, looked relaxed. And that's where he's found a big punch from. When you're, when you're relaxed and you're thinking, they come from nowhere rather than looking for the big punch. So... That stood him in good stead tonight. He's done it in spectacular style. Now we're going to move on. Go for the European, and he'll get a crack at the world title. You know, as Barry sitting here down here, Barry Jones, he's going to be fighting Freda soon. That fight's going to happen over here. We're trying to get it on for uh, late October, November. And down the road, there's a great fight between those two there. There's plenty of good fights, actually, to happen in this division, isn't there? And he, you know, he's become a man now. When he, those losses early in his career, he didn't have a man's strength. Now he's a man. And he's, you know, and he's thinking what he's doing. And I'm, you know, I'm so pleased for him. He, he's stuck in there. He's hung in there. You know, he, he didn't let the, 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 the setbacks make him walk away from the game. He focused on it. And Brian and, and, and Robin have done a fantastic job of him. And tonight's his night. He deserves it. He's a lovely lad. I'm really pleased for him. Great night for Michael Gomez. Thanks a lot. Cheers. OK, stay with us. More on the big fights we're all looking forward to in the next months. And Gomez has set us a standard already. Next year tonight, live at light middleweight, it will be Nikki Thurbin's return to action against Koba Kula. He's a big hit. Michael Gomez is the new British super featherweight champion, but what a way to win his first major title. Gary Thornhill, who'd started well, caught with a left hook and swept off his feet early in round two. Did well to recover from that Thornhill. Held on as long as possible, but caught again later in the second round. And when he was bowled over, Larry O'Connell quickly on the scene, the referee. And he decided at that point he'd seen enough. And Michael Gomez at 22 finds himself suddenly the new British super featherweight champion. And given his current form, not only can he win this Lonsdale belt, but he looks like a man who could hang on to it for a while. Opinions been split so far through Gomez's career, Jim. Anything you've seen there to make you change your mind and think this is a genuine prospect? He is a genuine prospect, I don't doubt that. The trouble is he boxed so poorly in the first round, he didn't get started. And I think one of the problems for Thornhill, he boxed out of character. He changed his tactics from his normal boxing style. He wanted to push Gomez back. He wanted to throw a lot more punches than normal. So that's not his style. So he started making mistakes. And he was severely punished because that was a beautiful left hook. And it caught him right on the point of the chin, right where you want to your best punches to land. And as soon as his legs stiffened up, he knew he was in serious trouble. He didn't get a chance to recover from that. Gomez, his credit, kept the pressure on and caught him again within a couple of shots. So it was the timing of the shot that made the difference there. This man has not got a, a record so far in his professional career as a knockout artist. I think only eight of 17 wins yeah, by It wasn't a devastating punch. If the punch had landed a little bit higher, Thornhill would probably have taken about landing bang on the sweet spot. You see, he dipped to his left as well, which gave him extra leverage and landed bang on the point of the chin. And, and down he goes. His legs just completely went away from him and he didn't get a chance to recover. See, he dipped to the, to the left, come back, got his full body weight behind the shot. It was a perfect punch, perfectly delivered punch, and it landed right on the perfect spot. Uh, and that's the result of it. The second knockdown I didn't think was a knockdown, and when it happened, it was in my mind that uh, he'll probably stand up, the referee will wipe his gloves, give him a few seconds and get him to the end of the round because that's what he needed. But he didn't. He stayed on his knees. You know, so that, that was the second shot, and you can see the effect that punch had on his legs. That was probably a 
a stronger punch than the one that knocked him over, but it caught him high on the cheek. See, he was pushed over here, and that wasn't, to me, a knockdown. I thought the referee would have wiped his gloves, give him a few seconds, and maybe the bell would have rang. But he stayed down, so when he stays down, the referee has to count. Now, the second mistake he made, he should have stood up at seven or eight, but he left it right till the end of the count, then the referee doesn't have a chance to gauge what kind of condition you're in. If Thornhill had got up two seconds earlier, put his hands up and looked straight back at Gomez, Larry O'Connor, who's an excellent referee, would probably have said box on. But he stayed down to nine, almost nine and a half, then jumped up, and, and the referee had to make an instant decision. He's let, and he was looking away from Gomez as well, so he, he made the only decision he could make to stop the fight. Jim Watt, former world lightweight champion. Now for a man who's former super featherweight WBO version world champion, Barry Jones. Here's how he sees it. He's with Adam. Well, Barry, you predicted a Gary Thornhill win on points. We all thought it was going to go the distance. How about that? Well, it was, it was, it was so, it was so ironic because they both, you know, it's like role reversal. If you like, Gary came out all fired up, you know, and, and, and doing all the work where he thought Michael was going to, and then Michael came out all relaxed and tidy, just tipped his shoulder and bang, what a shot, beautiful shot. It shows anything can happen, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's that's the sport for you, yes, definitely. But it, it, a great performance by Michael. He was so relaxed for the boy of 22. Or a young man of 20, I should say. He was so relaxed and composed. He came in the ring, you know, looking like a lunatic. But once the bell rang, he was just he just calmed himself down, boxed up, he moved around a bit, let, let Gary Thornell do all the work, and then just dipped his shoulder, hit him with the left hook. And the end of it. Where do you fit into this super featherweight picture now? Former world champion, Asselino Freitas is the WBO holder, a chilling puncher. You gonna face him? Yes, um, I'm hoping to get a date at the end of the week. I just spoke to Frank today, actually, and I'm hoping to get a date at the end of the week, and then I'll fight this sometime, hopefully in November, it looks like. And then, you know, hopefully, if I win that fight, then it could be Michael next. You never know. Thanks a lot for tonight.